Morning Mountain Chums, me again today. Today we're doing a bit of a classic Haystacks Fleetwood Pike anti clockwise. It's the end of September 2022, and if we'd been here a little bit earlier in the year, we'd have seen Tom Cruise jumping out of helicopters along here because they've been filming the new Mission Impossible film. We're not doing that today, which is probably for the best because I imagine it was a bit noisy. We start out of the car park at Gatesgarth Farm and head over to Peggy's Bridge and then up Scarth Gap Pass or Pass and then up to the crinkles of Haystacks. The best fell in the lakes, not my words, the words of Alfred Wainwright. It's a stunning day. It's a little chilly. It's about six, seven degrees so far. But I imagine it's going to warm up given the blue skies ahead. Directly behind me is Robinson. And then further around there, Hindscarth from the Newlands Round, which you can watch here, should you wish. Oh, I think this must be Peggy's Bridge. Famous last words, but we seem to be making pretty good progress. It helps that Haystacks isn't the highest hill in the lakes. I mean, obviously, but it's under 2,000 feet. From here, the way off Fleetwood Pike does look quite steep and, you know, terrifying. But I'm assured by Mark Richards that it's actually a lovely way off and one of the best views in the lake, so I'm going to trust Mark. This is the Scarth Gap Pass. You're welcome. With Scarth Gap actually off to the left. Pretty soon we break left and head on up to Haystacks. The other side of the pass, you go down into Black Sail and to the youth hostel there. There are a good number of cans all the way up here, which I think is probably quite important. It's probably quite often misty. And it's a good guide to the way up. Aha, the return of the lovely steps, not the band. Well, just before it disappeared, <laughs> that was haystacks. <laughs> Just coming into view over there. I think the back of Pillar, Blacktail Pass, and in a little bit we should be able to see the back of Great Gable. Obviously at this cairn, to get up Haystacks you turn left, 
to go down into Black Cell straight on and down. But we're going up, shall we? At first glance, this may look like we're going straight towards a cliff, but this is a zig, or depending on your preference, a zag, followed by the opposite of that. Okay, it does sort of lead you to a cliff. But it's got steps, it's fine. Slow and steady. Trying to work out the way forward. Going to go by the shine on the rocks. I think it's straight up and then left at some point. Let's find out. Here we go. See more cans ahead. I guess we go straight up this then. <laughs> Yeah, we go round. It's nice to know we don't have to go all the way up that. That would be too much. And again, up. Another little bit of craggy ascent and then I think we should be nearly there. There we go then, that's Haystacks. 597 meters, 1,959 feet. 
famous of course as Wainwright's last resting place and also his favourite felt top. He said, for beauty, variety and interesting detail, for sheer fascination and unique individuality, the summit area of Haystacks is supreme. This is, in fact, the best felt top of all. And it's very hard to argue. From Haystacks, we go east towards Honister and then make our way around up to the top of Fleetwith Pike after paying a little visit to Norman at Tarn and himself. This is Wainwright's slightly self-contradictorily named Innominate Tarn. Ironically, before Wainwright named it as having no name, it had a name. It was called Loaf Tarn, but it is now and probably will forever be Innominate Tarn. Famously, of course, Wainwright's ashes are scattered here. In Memoirs of a Fellwalker, Wainwright said, All I ask for at the end is a last long resting place by the side of Innominate Tarn on Haystacks. A quiet place a lonely place. I shall go to it for the last time and be carried. Someone who knew me in life will take me and empty me out of a little box and leave me there alone. And if you, dear reader, should get a bit of grit in your boot as you are crossing haystacks in the years to come, please treat it with respect. It might be me. It's a very lovely set of steps. I've become quite the connoisseur. Here comes the sun. If you fancy, it'd be really nice if you could give the old subscribe button a click, and maybe a like as well. Gives a sense of enormous well-being. This is one of the ways down, a little wiggly path that takes you back down into Buttermere. There's another one on the other side of the gill, near Dub's Hut. All good ways down, potentially easier than the one we're going to be doing. Keep your options open, see how you feel. Fleetwith Pike, of course, is synonymous with the Honester Mine, which is now a tourist attraction, but it's also still a working mine. And you can see the spoils of it all the way over the side of the hill.
absolutely stunning view across to Haystacks and Pillar and Captain Kirk fell. Now then. The plan at this point is to follow the footpath that's marked on the OS map. According to the OS map, the footpath goes up north behind Dub's hut and then goes east. But in reality, there's not a great deal of path on the ground, so you might be better off just following the road round because, as you'll see, we will join up with it in a bit. I wouldn't ordinarily recommend going off the path, but this is very clearly a path. And the other footpath involves going a long way down and then a long way back up again. And frankly, I'm just getting too old for that. making some progress not too far away from the summit. Keep an eye on the path around here because there are lots of mine shafts and mine related dangers. From here you get Buttermere, Cromach Water, Lowe's Water, away to the Irish Sea I presume, Scotland off in the distance. There you go, it's Fleetwith Pike. 648 meters, 2,126 feet. From here we go straight down Fleetwith Edge along the ridge of Fleetwith Pike down to Gatesgarth Farm. Here we go. So this descent is probably quite steep in places. Wainwright warns that every path is there for a reason, so don't stray from it. The view is really quite spectacular. I just need a rock, which is very much a bad thing to do on a descent like this, but there we go. Fingers crossed I won't be called on to use my knees at any point. That hasn't been too bad. I may be speaking a little prematurely. With all these bits, 
initially they can look a little intimidating, but when you get to them and break them down into small pieces, they're not that bad. I'm really quite enjoying this. Been so lucky with the weather. I'm not sure this would be quite as much fun in the rain. Yeah, I might just take a moment to sit here. That is one of those sections I imagine is easier going up than it is coming down. But we can't have everything, can we? Sting in the tail. The last little bit of downness to, well, other than the last bit. There's a lot of down. We've got to get down. It's over 2,000 feet. What can you do? Success. It doesn't help that I've got massive clod hopping feet. Don't take up a lot of a step. One of the big warnings about this descent is when you get to the, the snout of Fleetwood Edge, you have to hang right. If you go straight on, you will be in a world of bother. This is where you take a right. To go further would be foolish. This is known as Fanny Mercer's Cross, which is quite a landmark in the area. It has a little inscription on it, which says, erected by friends of Fanny Mercer, accidentally killed 1887. Fanny Mercer was a young servant girl who worked for Mr. Bowden Smith, who was a school teacher from rugby, and he was here with his family and servants on holiday. Apparently she was descending the fell with some friends, lost her balance and fell about 20 feet. She was taken down to Gatesgarth Farm, where she died from a serious head injury. Just below the cross there is a collection box for Cockermouth Mountain Rescue. So if you're in the area, given that it's apparently empty daily, I would suggest you make it worth their while by sticking a few quid in. Lovely piece of bath to finish with. I have enjoyed today enormously. I would strongly recommend the descent down Fleet with Edge. Thank you very much to Mark Richards for his recommendation, without which I probably would not have done it. Maybe save it for a good day though. Imagine it's not a great deal of fun in the rain. From here, I can actually see the car park, so not far at all. Well, that's about it from me. Thank you very much for watching, if indeed you still are. 
If you've enjoyed this, do please like and subscribe and join us once again, hopefully, for another Wainwright walk. Stay safe. And then at the end of the wood, we turn left and go up the Scarth something, something. Stop me from getting too technical. I mean, this is sort of broadly right. I don't know who I'm talking to. This isn't going to be in the film. Might be in the bloopers. This is mission just about feasible. Do 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 do